Elizabeth, uh, I just started that like um, <laughs> like a, a different kind of host. That's not the kind of host I am. I was just going to say, I was just going to ask you candidly, what is your middle name? Dean. Dean. I remember that Elizabeth now. Dean. I love it's that. A very, it's a like, great um, name. Very Southern. Short. Yes. Yeah, very short. It's very short in comparison to Elizabeth. It's my dad's name. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Aw, Elizabeth Dean. Your parents are lovely, by the way. You met my parents. I met them. When they came to yeah, set. I think once. Yeah. And that was yeah. a really awkward day because I was like masturbating. Can I say oh. masturbating? And they, we, we talk, we talk about, about that a lot. Joe masturbating <laughs> okay. a favorite. lot. Okay. So you're all good. Yeah. Did you see the shame spiral that yeah. came over me when I said that word out loud? I know. <laughs> Sad. Yeah, right next to talk about your parents. Let's just yes. Okay, now let's just break this down. Now hold on. So so uh, your parents were a window into your past, I think, a little bit, because they were very now, they're entitled to their rich life of various experiences, but on a set, they seemed very, just incredibly sweet, and, and they are. I mean quaint in the least condescending way. Yeah. Like, like they, they just seemed, you seemed like you were from them. a very different place. <laughs> and from, yeah, and from them. And that, <laughs> a and very that, different aww. place than New York City? Then, yeah, than New York City slash yes. the Hollywood. You know, because when you're on set, you're just sort of perpetually in Hollywood. You yes. Know? Mm. And so that, it was really nice. I, I am think. not perpetually in Hollywood in any kind of way. Mm. That's good. I don't think. No. Or I, I don't feel it on the inside. I was thinking about this podcast and I was like, oh, I'm pretty much the same person I was in middle school. Really? Wow. Like I still I still have all the same symptoms or all the <laughs> same conditions. Symptoms are of a disease. <laughs> 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 or I still have the symptoms from middle school. Yeah, right, mm-hmm. right. Uh, perhaps I'm better able to deal with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm very much a product of my parents, and they are very sweet and hyper supportive. Aww. And they were thr- thrilled to be there. They were. Despite the fact that their daughter... <laughs> was playing an yeah. adult, which is what they told the <laughs> Sunday school class. <laughs> that is so, such a good little line. Elizabeth That's is so playing sweet. an adult. Playing an She's adult. She's playing an adult. She's MBing <laughs> in a motel room. <laughs> MBing. <laughs> oh, my, I, who I really feel bad for is my grandparents. Oh, mm. Did they watch? Oh, my yeah. sweet grandparents. They watch everything. My grandmother wow. actually read the book. What? And then read the second book. Oh, my goodness. Wow. wow. So, she she probably won't listen to this, so I can just say I think she, she wait, enjoyed on, wait, it no, no, quite no, 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 a wait, bit. Wait a second, wait a second. She read the first two books and won't listen to this? <laughs> How are we supposed Come to take that? On. Welcome to Pod Crushed. We're your hosts. I'm Penn. I'm Sophie. And I'm Nava. And I think we would have been your middle school besties. Elizabeth. Dean Lale. Uh, you are our last guest for this season. Oh my. Yeah. And 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 you were kind of like a like a like a, a last minute idea even. <laughs> and it's and I think it's just I think it's just a, a really fitting cap to our first season. Aww. You know, who knows if there'll be a second? We don't know. One look <laughs> through the glass to our EP over there. I'm sure there will be. Yeah. Well, nah, we're not so sure. Now that Elizabeth well. has asked, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um you were you were raised in Asheboro, North Carolina. Yes. Right, which is a very different kind of yes, place sir. from from Hollywood or mm-hmm. New York where we met. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell us a little bit like just 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 paint a, in the broadest strokes a picture? Yeah. Well, I think maybe like 15 years ago, Asheboro was like top 10 dying cities of mm. the United States. Dying? It's, yes. It's no wow. longer that. It's booming. Wow. And it's, they mm. beautified it. And I feel like a couple years ago, it, like, it got top 10 most quintessentially beautiful towns. Huh. Huh. Um, so what happened? I don't know. <laughs> that's, an excellent, that's an excellent question. Yeah. <laughs> I had very little to do with it. Well, although, you left. <laughs> although I do host the Chamber of Commerce Awards every once in a while. Wait, what? Yes. What does that mean? It means I was very involved in my community growing up. Aww. That's really sweet. Yeah. How, so, how, like, how uh, you host, <laughs> you're... you're are you a politician? No, but I. It, it, it's cool because you get to talk to a lot of politicians on both mm. sides. Right. 
And they're very charming in North Carolina. Mm, I and can suddenly imagine. suddenly you see how it all happens. Mm. Wow. You're like, oh, this is how people get on certain sides. This is how it all collapses. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> sorry, this is a stupid joke. Mm. But it's beautiful. It's a lovely, it's a small town. Um, it's got its divisions. History. Its issues. Mm. History. All, yeah, sure. It's got its history. Uh, I, I think they're still working on getting some Confederate uh, statues down there. Yeah, right. But mm-hmm. there are a group of people working on that. So to me, that, okay. that's a positive for a rural town of in course, North yeah, Carolina. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when you were in middle school, like, did it feel like a very small place? It felt like my entire world yeah. mm. in a really beautiful way in a way that I'm very grateful for now now that the world is so large because of social media and because of the industry that I'm in yeah I feel really grateful that I grew up thinking these were the most important people in my life like my friends my family Mm -hmm. my church um Mm -hmm. and school in middle school but it was kind of life or death in that way as well Well, right what was it that was the first well, I won't, sorry, I won't go into, I won't go, because there's sort of like two brackets, middle school and then like the show you. Yes. I won't go into that yet. What's even it called? Though I, <laughs> 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 um, here, you, you, you guys can take one of the middle school questions because I, I don't want to. Well, yeah, I mean, Elizabeth, I'd actually love to hear just a little bit more about your family, if you had siblings and what was your personality like. Is Just like tell us everything you want to share about 12-year-old Elizabeth. Oh, boy. Uh, my heart hurts when I think of 12-year-old Elizabeth, mm-hmm. um, which is an interesting reaction when you say that mm-hmm. I just like want to hold her and hug her mm-hmm. um, because it's such – I've always thought that middle school is the hardest time of life. We mm-hmm. very much – well, I'm I very sh- much is, agree. Is I, mean, that the, I, I imagine it was very hard for you because yeah. you were – working no when you but were yeah, 12 yeah that's, that's part of where yeah so that's part of why very strange for you yes yeah. um but i think it's i've always i've even said throughout my life seventh grade worst time of my life worst year of my life wow. really yeah really Was there- I, because you don't yeah you don't have um again you don't have any of the coping tools or yeah. perspective that you have as an adult so mm-hmm. the same things could happen later mm-hmm. but suddenly you're you know it's going to be okay but when it yeah. happens in middle school it's kind mm-hmm. of the first time it's the a lot first of those time things are yeah um i i again i i said earlier i feel very much the same person at my core yeah shy mm-hmm. um Desperate to be an actress, mm-hmm. even at 12. I was doing, like, community theater, and mm-hmm. I thought, this is the best thing ever. Kind of the one place I felt safe and secure and free. Mm-hmm. Um, silly. I was a cheerleader. Mm. Wow. Uh, you actually did. I remember you, didn't you? you did like, I do like, a cheer for you? No, not oh, for me. But you did, <laughs> I, there was, like, a cheer joke we had, wasn't there? <laughs> She's, I feel like, yes, he was like, yeah, you're doing this. Uh, you're, so, you're so naturally doing this. It's like your elbows just yeah. lock into position. Uh, and you know, you're know you just Naturally there. peppy. Yeah, you're just ready to, to cheer. Yes, naturally peppy. And I do recall that was some kind of running joke we had in season one, but it's hard to... That's kind of my personality, like ready to to be like supportive and peppy, but could cry at any moment. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, that's, that's such a good and combo. That, yeah. It means you need a cheerleader. You need someone cheering you on. Yeah. I do. That's beautiful. Yeah. But Elizabeth, that also yeah. makes you such a good actress. Like that combination of qualities, I feel is like that's what you want. Also an actress yeah, being, can like cry on a dime. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah being unstable. <laughs> yeah, she's well, thank God for unstable. middle school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Thank Elizabeth. God. I, so let's dig into that a okay, little bit. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, you know, you're, you're free to give the level of detail you're comfortable with right. by the way we're not that we're not mm-hmm. like a right. you know a, um, a therapy ta- session well I, I was going to say tabloid <laughs> article <laughs> we're closer to a therapy session but it's you know it's up to you how, how far you want to go but like if 7th grade was the hardest year yeah is there I mean is there an event that, that, that made it that or was it just the coming to terms with like you know the world you're growing <laughs> into and well, I think suddenly you you start to become, or I started to become a bit older, more of a woman. 
Uh, and then suddenly I had like sexual attention. desire, a mm-hmm. lot of attention, um, which at the time you're just kind of laughing off and feel really uncomfortable with and so much so ashamed of. Mm. Mm. And, and you don't realize, I, like, when I look back at middle school, I'm like, oh, I was being sexually harassed mm-hmm. wow. mm. pretty much on a daily basis <clears throat> by really terrible boys. Aww. Yeah, I think boys. Your age. Yeah, my age. And it's like I can extend them grace because of that age and that time and society. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I harbor any kind of ill will towards them, but I think it did quite a number on me emotionally but I had I you know and I had my seventh grade boyfriend um and it was like if we kissed or did anything the whole school knew Mm. and then suddenly you were like the whore of Ashboro which right which in a very Christian town is the last thing you want to be so it was very scarlet letter-esque I was gonna say the whore of Ashboro sounds like a really good play (laughs) (laughs) that's for what it's worth I mean, I don't know if you're thinking about... I like about, that. Yeah. I like that. The Whore of Let's, Espero, let's set it in... Streaming on Hulu. Let's set it in like pure... <laughs> Puritan times or something. <laughs> yeah. But thank Which you for you sharing that. And I'm also sorry to hear <laughs> yeah. that you went through that, Elizabeth. Yeah. That's really yeah, challenging. Thank you. Yeah. I I mean, I imagine I'm not the only one, but you yeah. don't have the words for it. And you also, it's like, I didn't do anything about it. You just kind of laugh or keep your head down mm-hmm. um, or lie. Like you just mm-hmm. hide, hide, hide. I did a lot of hiding in middle school. Mm. Which, I, again, I think is why I found so much comfort in the theater because suddenly you were allowed to be loud or crazy mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. silly or sexual. You were you were allowed to be those things mm-hmm. in an expressive way that yeah. I, I clearly very wasn't allowed in my mind and somewhat from society to express in my real life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, and right. I still suffer from that today. That's what I mean. It's like that kind of stuff stays with you. That kind of like public shaming stays with you. Well, yeah, absolutely. I actually, you know, I'm recalling that we uh, did we talk. About I think this? we talked about this on set because I think we were <laughs> naturally, you know, we were wanting to bring some reality to. This was before anybody knew the show was going to be like you know some giant strange hit. Right, we we're making a show about a murderer. Like, and, you know, again, spoiler, he kills her at the end. And so, you know, you and I were, more than anybody, grappling with this, (laughs) like, what is the story that we're bringing (laughs) to life here? Yeah. Yeah. And I am now remembering that, yeah, I remember you talking about about this specifically, like like the shame, the sort of sexual shame that felt like it was just sort of pervasive and and mm. impressed upon you yeah. in, in middle school. I had a very handsome boyfriend in middle school. Mm. <laughs> uh, and did you guys, did you think you were going to? Yes. Get, really, in middle in school? In middle school. Wow. Well, this was kind of, you know, puppy love. Uh, mm-hmm. And he moved away. This was like in the eighth grade. But wow. he, I was the cheerleader and he was basketball player on the other team. Wow. Mm. And yeah, I felt like, oh, this is as good as it's going to get. Like, right. This is the best, wow. the best of the Stuff best. Stuff movies. And we were, 13, yeah, and we were both like, you know, into Christian music. Right. And the, the Christian element was really the bond. Yeah. Now, I'm sure if we were hanging out today, there'd be all kinds of ways in which we don't get along. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know why you'd assume that. Well, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Kidding. I don't know. Um, Because I do feel, in a lot of ways, from my friends from that time, I've become a bit of a black sheep. Yeah, sure. Uh, Of course, some of them came with me, but it's like there are different schools of thought. Yeah. People deal with those things, you know, in different ways, and I do feel like some people doubled down and was like, yes, this is the life for me, and I was like, actually, I think I need to go find my own life in my own way. Mm. Um, but back to my parents. My parents were are actually very liberal-minded, mm. uh, shockingly so, for again, for their town and their upbringing. Um, my parents well, are kind of, you know, you come to them with anything, and they're, they're, they're the kind of people that are like, oh, we're there if it works and we're there if it doesn't. Mm. Mm. They, they've always, you know, encouraged my sister and I, I have an older sister, to be independent and, you know, make our, make our own way and make our own life. And 
Um, and even though I felt enormous amount of pressure to be like the perfect Christian girl, mm. I don't actually think that came from my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say my parents in some ways feel like the perfect Christian family mm. uh, because they're incredibly patient, incredibly giving, mm. and incredibly present in their community in that way. And somehow managed to have ex- like very different politics in their whole community. So I don't know how they do that. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I know my sister and I, we were both, we hate to disappoint and we really hate to disappoint them. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think my mom thought I would never get married. I think <laughs> really? Was a part of her was like, yeah, I think she thought. And because at some point in my life, again, I, I rebelled against that whole idea, which was I thought I would be you know, married to someone at like 20 or 21, mm. something crazy. Sounds like you were talking more like 16. No. I mean, the way you were, you <laughs> Yeah, know, in middle, middle, middle school. school. Well, it's again, because women, I don't know for men, but I know for young women, we're brought up to prioritize that mm. or to at least yeah. believe that's going to be our way <clears throat> in life. And it is a very defining choice. It does define your life in a big way. Yeah. Um, but I know in that, obviously, I also dreamt of becoming an actress and I didn't realize that those two things might not coincide. Elizabeth, can you tell us a little bit more about this eighth grade relationship that you had? Like your first <laughs> love, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, should we name names? He knows who he is. <laughs> His name was Andrew. And I'm telling you, he was the hottest guy <laughs> in middle school. I swear, wow. I had girls come up to me. And I was not the hottest girl, but I thought I was. You know, but I had graces. Exactly. And he, I was actually doing a play, like a community children's play. And he came to see the play twice. Wow. And he was like a friend of one of the guys in the play. And that's how we met. So uh, now... Uh, this sounds like you're older again because everything that you <laughs> well, I like, think well, he, I think I bloomed a little early. That's yeah. well, no, because I mean, like the dynamic, like he came twice. Like what? His mom dropped him off. Yeah, I mean, that's oh, twice. Yeah. So twice. like, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, the tr- the truth is, in middle school, especially <laughs> if you live in Ashboro, it's not like you live in New York City. We can walk everywhere. There's yeah. a level of agency you don't have, mm. you know. But then you're, but then you feel as though you're living this mature life. So 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 the picture you just painted almost sounded like you could be in your early twenties. Like <laughs> you're in a play, and this guy came by twice. He saw yes. the show twice. He like spent the money on the. No, this man's. <laughs> Mother is giving him the everything. Yeah, right? that's Including even more of a big deal. Oh yeah. And so and so, I guess I'm just curious. Like, uh, like oh, his uh, mom took us on all our dates. Yeah, too. Oh. right. Well, she would have had yeah. to. Which included like walking around the neighborhood or walking oh, around. The mall. Yeah, I do that right, now. The mall. The yeah. good old. Oh my gosh, the mall. What a spot. Yeah. Wow. I think it continues to be a spot now. Really? I think so. Yeah. From the middle schoolers, that my niece is 14. Oh wow. And I think it can, and when I look at what's amazing, because for this, I was looking for pictures of me Mm. in middle school, sixth grade to eighth grade is, it's like, I look like a baby Mm. to not a, not an adult, but very, uh, the transformation is the growth that happens in that short amount of time Mm. is, I I think a part of the reason why it can be so painful. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Oh yeah. Although oh, my niece seems totally fine. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure I seem totally fine, too. Exactly. you yeah. got to talk to your niece, Elizabeth. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah, she real. wants to be an actress, too, which is very sweet. Aww. D- do you feel like you've had an influence on her? Absolutely, yeah. How do you feel about that? You know... I do think it makes me nervous, which is so sad because, mm. like, I went around when I was 14 saying, oh, I want to be an actress. I want to be in, in a place where people aren't, that's not something you can do. And my my parents, again, they didn't bat an eye. They were like, okay, great. We'll sign you up for a summer camp and you'll go to drama school and um, all the things. But I... Um, I also know like so much changes from 14 to 18 and so much changes from 18 to 22. Like there's just, it's such a, a growing, a growing up season of life. And I, and I do know like a group of my friends were like, yeah, let's all be actresses. And I think two of us ended up doing it. 
mm. um, which is pretty amazing numbers, pretty amazing odds yeah, that for is. a small town. Yeah, it is. Um, but so it makes me a little nervous. Uh, but also, I'm kind of like, do it, do whatever you want. Like again, I think that kind of that belief, someone else believing in you, can really give you the boost. Because I yeah. was a terrible actress at 14. You know, <laughs> like, and I, I, we actually went to see one of my niece's uh, musicals. She did Little Shop of Horrors, great musical, um, but painful to watch middle schoolers <laughs> doing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> painful. And I turned to my mom and I said, Mom, was, was this what it was like when you came to all my plays? And she was like, yes. <laughs> she was the worst. clearly like, yes, I've done this for so many oh, years. What a nightmare. Funny. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, that, that makes me recall that I uh, haven't thought about this in a while, but I was in fame. When I was in middle school, my life. In fact, I was what already you mean the living. The actual TV show? No, no, no. Oh. I was in. Um, I was. I did Fame, <laughs> the play, with my school after I had left. So I remember flying back um, from LA. Wow. Just to be in like the last performance thing, Aww. and I remember. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I think I memorized my lines on the plane. I just know that even then, I was like memorizing the lines. Last Late. minute. Yeah. yeah. The <laughs> difference between you and me though is that you were probably a very talented actor at twelve. Uh, and I was really not good. Well, that's flattering, but I I mean, you know what? Th- that might have been true then, but I know what then happened from like fifteen to twenty, if not a little bit later, was when I see things from that era mm-hmm. that are, you know, there, immortalized at least while television lasts. Um it, it's painful <laughs> to me to watch. It's, it's painful to watch things from that age because I can see where I'm being drawn away from my instincts yeah. by, you know, just like the the machine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you think by the my direction you were given? Yes. Yeah, my, yeah, like the, you know, and it's not one conscious person literally drawing me away from my instincts. It's like that wasn't fast enough. Do it like this. Ah, uh, that's not gonna. You know, it's not. It's it's yeah. it's like it's like being led away from the specificity of what you can shine. Yeah. The light, the unique light, regardless of whether or not you're good or bad. Just like the unique interpretation you're gonna give. I was being drawn away from that constantly by working in so much television. Yeah. Mm, interesting. And do you feel that way now? Can I either confirm or deny? No, no, no. But look at what it's taken to be on a show as yeah. solely You've, focused on like the mindset of this one character that is so. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's so so so. No, I actually don't feel that way anymore. But it's taken a long time. Yeah. Mm. Elizabeth, we want to get into your journey into acting and you, but we just have one more middle school question that we ask every guest, which okay. is, do you have an embarrassing story? Uh, a lot of the stories we get deal with embarrassing moments, so we think it's like a fun thing to to hear from our guests if you have one. Something embarrassing that you remember that stood out that happened in around middle school? Mm. <laughs> so many. <laughs> I, feel, I feel bad because the, the first one that comes to mind, of course, is a, a period story. Oh, yeah. Feel free. That's great. We, we love a, a good lot of those. Okay. Don't, don't, so feel, don't feel the, like you're... No, you're I not. Just, I love that you whispered it. about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again. We, like, we've read uh, Tampax ads. Oh, yeah. I have read Tampax ads. <laughs> <laughs> on... on, uh, yes, as, on because they're supporting the show? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, here we go. <laughs> Tampax. I got. Anyway, anywho. No, my most embarrassing... The, well, the thing that comes to mind was the period story. And I had had my period before... So, but I, it's still, it's still early. Mm-hmm. So then, and nobody talked to me about it. Not really. Like, of mm-hmm. course I did the class, but I think like my sister taught me how to put in a tampon. Like there was no. Wait, a class? Yeah, like yeah, health in class. Fifth, in the fifth grade, there's a class. <laughs> oh, just like the broad general. They give you the like, strokes of maybe what's going to happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right. it's, it's like I knew what was going on. Um, yeah. And the first time it happened, I was in school gym. Um, and sweet Diana gave me her jacket to tie around my Aww. waist, um, which is, yeah, so I, I, I love her. Um, but that's not the embarrassing story. The embarrassing story is I wore a khaki skirt to school. We were doing like end of grade testing. So it was like two or three hours sitting in one desk. Mm. <sighs> And I kind of like went to stand up and I was like wet. And I was like, Aww. oh no, something's wrong. And my sweet teacher, Miss Shoemaker, we also went to my church, thank God. Uh, I like called her over and I was like, I have a problem. Something's <laughs> gone terribly wrong. 
And it was like the most massive <gasps> blood stain. I was mm. on your sorry, khaki. guys. Yeah, mm. on a khaki skirt is really mm. bad. Yeah. So, wait, so what did you do though? I mean, like she you know. also gave me her jacket to tie around my waist. <laughs> oh, we had to call my sweet. mom. My mom mm. left her, her left work, went to the house, got me a jean skirt, and I came back <laughs> and she and I changed at school. I like waited in the office, mm. and then when I came out and I was like going finishing the rest of the school day, everyone was like, "Oh my god." Gosh, they made you change your skirt. It was not that short. <laughs> oh, and that was, they didn't and that's see what it. I told everyone. I was like, yeah, it was just too, because there was the whole, like, it had to be past your fingertips yeah. rule. Right. Yeah. And then they were like, Elizabeth's Girl a problems. whore. She wore a yeah, skirt that's exactly. too short. And that's how it all started. The whore of our lore continued. It continued. Oh, no. <laughs> I feel like that was, that was probably um, the most em- embarrassing because just yeah. anyone. Yeah, that's rough. Having to involve, like now, of course, I'll ask a stranger for a tampon, no problem. But yeah. at that time, you're like, this is, it could not. I mean, thank God I didn't stand up and everyone saw. But mm-hmm. th- thank you, Miss Shoemaker. Oh, that's so yeah. sweet. Very sweet. Yeah, what, what what would we do? Like before track before having an app to just track your period? Like it would just I surprise love you. My app. <laughs> it would just yes, surprise exactly. you all the time. I was I was I was free. Yeah, free, free bleeding there for a long time. Not there. intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Interesting use of the colloquial <laughs> term. <laughs> yeah. It's, it tracks. <laughs> Uh, Elizabeth, maybe we can get into your journey into acting. So you've already shared a little bit, sort of, it was like a longing that you had and a place where you felt free. How did you go from community theater to professional acting? Uh, Just miracle after miracle. Um, (laughs) Well, my mom forced me to audition for a play. I was a very, I was a pretty shy kid in, in general, um, but I think she knew. She, it's like I had seen theater. I was always very moved by all the community theater like we went to see. Um, and so I think my mom knew. And my sister and I, we would make movies at home, <laughs> as, as, as you do. I, and I played every character. <laughs> what did your sister Every do? character Wait, includes. So where, where's your sister in this? <laughs> She's the video videographer. <laughs> <laughs> no tripod. Okay. No tripod. Uh, Human but, tripod. I, I would I would play like Professor Plum and then Scarlet, mm. and we'd have the board, the Clue board game. These did are you, so did fun. she ever want to get in front of the camera? You know, she. I, I think she liked being bossy mm-hmm. and in charge, mm. <laughs> and I was very happy to like do whatever she said. Yeah, um, okay. and, and that was also my sibling dynamic as well. Mm-hmm. Um, not that we need to, <laughs> to dive therapy. Let's that go part into of it. it. Yeah. I want you to be uncomfortable <laughs> with talking about your sister. I've already my cheeks already got hot <laughs> talking about my period. Um, well, you truly are in good company because it's like we we have we've we've gone real deep on uh, several on other these. people's stories. Okay, and because you know we have a lot of women on the show. Yeah. Um, and a lot of women listening, so mm-hmm. and with periods, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, potentially. Mm. Um, we cut um, you off. Were you gonna? No, go you were talking about the home there. home movies. So, how did that translate oh, into yes, professional home movies? Yes, um, and so I think my mom knew that that would be something I enjoy. She was, of course, correct. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and I think I had like one line in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers at the community theater. <laughs> I played like Dorcas's sister was really, you know, my big <laughs> breakout role. Opening for, yeah, my breakout role. <laughs> uh, and then and then I did like another another play. And like I said, that's where I met really my real friends, like mm. my truest friends or my greatest friends. Um, and so I, it was just something I always say in some ways it's really just because I did a lot of after school activities and it's really just the only one I didn't quit. Mm. It's the only one that I've always wanted to keep doing, um, and I was, and then I just got, I got very lucky because I had my parents' support, and they would send me to drama camp at the the art school, and then I ended up going to like a drama boarding school uh, for my senior year of high school. Wow! Wow! Um, and they like prep you to audition for college. Uh, a drama boarding school. Yeah. So, so that it, means you were what, like Monday Friday, or were you? No, I lived there. Wow. Yeah. How long? Wait, how long? For a year. I mean, for a school year. Wow. And what age? Uh, seventeen. Wow. Was it in North Carolina? 
in North Carolina. Yeah. And then I went to college there. So wow. How did you feel really? leaving home at that age? I, I loved it. Yeah. I was really apathetic in high school. <laughs> mm. Like I was to the point where like I was like wanting to skip school mm -hmm. and I would go like we had a little drama class, but it was like a zero period. So I would go just a zero period and then I wouldn't go to the rest of school. Wow. wow. You would skip. It's a zero period? <laughs> it's like um, homeroom. Do Is it the first? No, it's before <laughs> school. school actually yeah. starts. <coughs> it's kind of the period they give like if you're in the jazz band mm -hmm. because we had to rehearse plays after school. But if they wanted like an actual class. It had to be before. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's kind of like adding on like an mm -hmm. extra class. I think I get it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Periods never really made sense to me. Partly because I'm a man, partly because I never went to high school. Yeah, so it's exactly. Just, like it's really, it doesn't matter no what kind of period, not yeah. my experience. Yeah. So, anyway. But I was doing very well in high school on the acting front. I remember mm. I was also in band and my band teacher, he was like, oh, Elizabeth, if you stay well, you know, we'll give you the lead in the next mm. play, mm. and then you can be one of the captains of the marching band. Wow. It was like, um, yeah, like one of the conductors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so cute. I was very cool, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very clear. <laughs> um but yeah, I was ready to go. I was. It was maybe yeah. one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me was getting into the high school program at that school. Mm-hmm. Cause, uh, cause suddenly, like my world broke open, because mm. they were. It was like a dance school, a drama school, a music school, um, and then I was seeing the best theater I'd ever seen in my life, and it was mm. literally making me have to like lay down on the ground. Oh. I was so moved. Wow. Yeah, the first time I saw Fences was at wow. school when I was in high school. It was at mm. the drama school, and I just it like remains. Jonathan Majors was actually in it. And it wow. remains one of maybe one of the best performances I've ever seen. Maybe because I was younger, right? Mm -hmm. But does, but, but, but that doesn't, doesn't really matter. matter. No, I mean, it yeah, was exactly. It was exactly. Yeah, exactly. it was like, That's yeah, it was the key. like holy shit. Yeah, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. Obviously not in fences, but <laughs> in something else. <laughs> Did you find it easy to make friends because you're all there for like a common purpose, or? Well, my best friend from middle school went with me. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, yeah. so you didn't have that um, like lonely. Yeah, and that's feeling. another that's another really important key to my story is that this other person and I decided together that we were going to be actors. And I think knowing her and meeting her and her parents also being willing to kind of, you know, drive us to camp and whatnot opened that door for me and and made that more of a possibility. Hmm. Which is just really lovely and beautiful. So we both we both went to the high school program, and then I met one of my other best friends who remain, her, her birthday is actually today. Happy Aww. birthday, Julianne! Yeah. Aww, I know. Nice. And so she was in the high school program with me, and we all went to the college program. Wow! And so yeah, greatest friends in my life. So it's connected. The high school and the college were connected. Yeah, That's, because okay. they start dancers at like seventh grade. They start musicians oh. at like. Uh, I want to say 10th, 10th, right. 10th, 11th, and then drama is just senior year. And then the dancers, they might go off and be in a company, but they also have a college program as well where you can wow. continue. So you were surrounded by artists. Surrounded by artists and so happy cool. as a clam. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah. It was, I, you know, when you're in it, it's so hard because suddenly you're more vulnerable than you've ever been and they you know it is all those things they break you down you're working like impossible hours and you're having to finish academics while all you want to be doing is rehearsing for a play um but i think back on my college years and i'm like man that was amazing all i did was work on incredible text mm -hmm. like incredible writing with great with great actors great artists and young people just being hyper creative yeah that's with amazing. No responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Other, other than oh to that. Goodness. You know, <laughs> I went and spoke at a friend of mine uh, teaches it at NYU Tisch, and um, I, I went and and just like sat in on a class, and we had like a just sort of a conversation with his, his students, and that was what struck me walking through the halls. And one of the first things I recall saying in our conversation there was like. You know, 
people are always thinking about how to break in to mm-hmm. the business or however you want to coin that phrase. And apart from the whole thing where I have to overcome my, uh, my, my just <laughs> decades-long systemic cynicism about whether or not <laughs> that's something people should try to do because, because statistically it's just so unlikely, you know, mm-hmm. and that means because it's not a meritocracy. And there's all kinds of other things about it that are really unjust. But actually, in a way, d- going to school like that Conservatory, that sort of thing. I mean, you're you you almost never are going to get you're never going to get that as, again. That, that's that, that pure. And if yes. you just talk about the aspect of arts that inspire your soul, you know, your mind, your heart, that's what you're doing it for. You're not. I mean, you think you're doing it because you want to you want to become successful, career. but that's actually when you're doing the work of engaging in an occupation, mm-hmm. which is like mm. completely different from the pure craft of of art making yeah you know? and so i don't know so it's something about what you're saying is also why when i was walking through these halls that just last week speaking to these babies <laughs> um i was like wow this feels i still feel the i don't know like it's the, magical yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah 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 and i wanted to <laughs> to to be in that more yeah i honestly i've spent my entire career my like what eight years of career trying to feel that again mm-hmm. yeah it's very disappointing how do you, how, I was gonna say, how do you feel like you're doing speaking of cynicism yeah. no um <laughs> i mean it comes in it comes in flashes yeah it does it happens it really in small every moments. once in a while something yeah. magical happens or you work with a director that just moves you like this <laughs> <laughs> kidding. actually that's a spoiler that's yeah a spoiler. i was like we can't that, say no, that no, no, i was gonna say oh you worked that. in london yeah i had no idea <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> um, um you guys first yeah, met can... on the set of you right can you tell us not about on the set me? no i mean no, we met set. we we, we yeah. met when she was reading for the role yeah. yeah can you tell us about and, that experience uh, i mean it was pretty straightforward in the sense that and i in my recollection there you were the only person they were reading I wasn't the only person. Oh, okay. Well, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here we go. My my memory of it is that were there other people in the? No, I think that day when we did our chem read, I think it was just me. Okay, right. So Penn and I did a chemistry read here in New York, um, but then I had to go like convince the big boys in LA. After that, mm-hmm. you're kidding. Wow. And I tested against another girl. You're kidding. Yeah, yeah, which I always feel I hate it when they do that. They've yeah. done it to me. They've done it to other actresses that I know, where we have to test against each other, but they're kind of just using the other one to prove their point and to mm. make sure they can pay you as little as possible. Maybe. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yep, that's one of the reasons. Trust me, it's like it's like oh, number three. The, yeah. yeah, they're like this one is good, but this one's going to be cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but I thought we had pretty good chemistry. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you got it. Yeah, yeah, thank God. Yeah, and then you know you played Beck, which. Joe and Beck is the iconic, uh, yeah. the glass box, uh, the glass, glass box. box special. Yeah, yeah. the glass box. <laughs> for, for those who aren't watching box. this on on YouTube, by the way, you can go to our YouTube channel. <laughs> mm. um, I'm doing a chef's kiss hands. Yeah, you yeah. know what's the glass box special. Really sweet is yeah. the um, security guard downstairs in this building. He loves us. And he Aww. loves us together. Oh, but did he say that? Beck and Joe. Oh, he yeah. That's, yeah. that's really yeah. sweet. <laughs> yeah, and he also, he was like, your character, y- yours was the sweetest. And I was like, really? I think that's true. That's true. I, that's no, I think that's true. definitely But true. at the time, but before the other seasons, I feel like Beck was pretty highly vilified because people were like, oh mm. my gosh, how could you cheat on him? Mm. Well, that's just the magnification you know. of the things you were talking about in your sort of small town. Um, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah. it still ha- absolutely yeah, like the shame thrown at women. How, mm. how, how, how Guys, how much more does Joe have to do for anybody to stop loving this man? <laughs> no. It's just, it's just a, that, no. don't answer the question. Could it's you not just to be try to be yet. a little less attractive? <laughs> I think that would help. Break your uh, nose right? or something. I am doing what I can. <laughs> It is pretty clear. <laughs> if you could just uh, have maybe, you know, like sleep I'll, less. Yeah, what else could oh, you do? These, you these are going a little gray, yeah. but it looks good. Very much. Yeah, this is the thing. <laughs> it's an injustice. It's an injustice. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, Elizabeth, when you guys were doing the press tour for the first season of You, you talked a lot about like the toxic tropes of love and how the show is re- is is trying to... Um, kind of show you their logical conclusion. And I had like two questions thinking about that. But first of all, I thought you both spoke about it really eloquently. I was re-watching and I was really impressed with how you guys handled that that press around a show that I think could have 
gotten you guys canceled <laughs> in the wake of Me Too. So I think Far the way you canceled. handled, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right <laughs> though. You're right. In a way. Part of it had to do with like the thoughtfulness is, of you two as like human beings. Um, mm. Thank you, Nama. But so I had two questions that that sort of came to mind. One is like I would love to hear from both of you a toxic trope about love that is still present that you think like hasn't gotten debunked but is toxic yeah. if anything comes to mind and then the other is in one of the press stores Elizabeth I don't know if you remember but you talked about friendships becoming too obsessive and controlling and toxic in that way and I was just curious if you could share more about that as well oh yes <laughs> I think there are so many yeah like love tropes that are still very and I don't know if anyone ever is like digging around TikTok um, I don't know. No. I don't do it very frequently, <laughs> but every time I do, for some reason, something about my algorithm, it's like, how to seduce a man. <gasps> one. Really? <laughs> you need to be on I'm there like, more. I, so I, it's it like, I don't you. even use you. Why? Like, I know. Yeah. Like, a, I, don't, I don't participate in any way. It's, it's defaulting. It's, that's yeah. default. Yeah. That's honestly the scariest I, time. Hmm. And, I, and I think there is, there, I mean, there, I mean, there are just so many like toxic elements about love and and I, and I do think that one of them is that um like once it's it's there is this kind of like trapping obsessive like now you're stuck in this element like mm. if you really love me like you wouldn't step out mm. you wouldn't cheat if you really love me you would stay with me forever mm. um and i think those ideas are not useful in the human experience from from my from my like limited limited time is is like how can we be in love and and give love by by giving someone freedom to be every part of themselves inside of the context of this relationship that's what mm. i'm looking for that's what Beck was looking for mm -hmm. that she could not get. She got a lot of intimacy mm. and a lot of care from Joe, but she wasn't really allowed to be to be all parts of herself. Mm. I disagree. I think you know, he supported her in every way that was no, that's of course not true. Uh I actually think what you just said is interesting because for what I was hearing, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, maybe this is, you tell me if this is right, but I feel like the first perspective, which was uh, if you, you wouldn't step out if you really loved me, the, it was it was love from like a sort of deficit or scarcity yeah. my, perspective. It's a little bit like all the things you can't do yes. as opposed to the things that you can do now that you're in a relationship. I, and I think that's actually sort of a world over thing. Or that's when we talk about toxic tropes, like to me... I, I feel like, well, there's two things I'm thinking of. One is the way people increasingly view relationships is as a form of bondage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marriage especially. Yeah. Which, although I completely understand because it's been wielded especially against women um, in a way that is that. So, uh, well, has, well, has been that and yeah, can yeah. easily fall into that. Right. And yeah. If you don't very actually, intentional. You, you, that's so true. I'm glad you said that because mm. if you're not intentional, it does default kind of yeah. like in anything, anything that is mm. systemic. This includes race, gender, class, everything. If you aren't intentionally working towards the, the new progressive way, then mm. it, it will default. Even though you are not that way yourself right. or your partner, it will default into that if the you don't put in the work. The system is built that way. Yeah, the exactly. relationship is built that way. Yeah, yeah. and so that, that is a really interesting point that you highlight. And for that reason, because of that work, this is the trope that I think is the most toxic, that love just happens, mm -hmm. that there's no work. Mm. And and also then there's also this weird the way people talk about the work is like it's yeah not really, for me I, I don't it's like the that work. word work <laughs> yeah it's like it's not really yeah. work it's just a little bit like it is an act it's a discipline it's a practice it's a life it's an activity it's it's many things it doesn't just visit you magically and then because what I think we are in the face of love is exceedingly passive mm -hmm. we believe that it's a magic feeling that visits you and then we do virtually nothing to cultivate it. Mm -hmm. In fact, what we do is we sort of behave in a way that exhausts all of the potential that it has. Yeah. Because you just sort of run on magical fuel and no kind of structure or restraint mm -hmm. or patience or anything. And then the feelings run out because it's because the beginning of love is not the same thing as, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a lasting relationship. Yeah. And then we wonder why the first time we start to feel bad, 
were like, oh, I'm falling out of love. Totally. It's like, no, yeah. you just you're compl- you're laying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you're laying. You're just like well, incredibly you, or passive. Or you think you have enough yeah. time for this to pass or something? Mm. But it, it's yeah, I couldn't agree more. And that's kind of what I meant, like. Um, because when people don't feel like they're allowed to be their full selves or they mm. still carry any kind of shame yeah. uh, from middle school or beyond, um, you don't communicate. You don't mm. right. You don't say like, hey, actually, that this doesn't work for me. This mm-hmm. agreement that we have that we've always had, like I, at least in my relationship, we're kind of constantly having to reinvent the wheel because there's so much change and growth. I mean, even for me from like 25 to 30. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, like, the, like, I think that's a part of the work is, like, being honest with yourself and then being able to be honest with your partner. But it Mm. takes breaking out of those social norms. It takes Mm. being like, oh, no, I don't want to be the thing that I thought I was supposed to be. Or, like, I don't want to practice love in the way that I've, that I see it on TV. Mm -hmm. That's actually not enough for me or it doesn't feel good for me mm-hmm. but it's hard because we're so brainwashed just watch a lot of TV yeah we're yeah. so brainwashed <laughs> to think you know I'll be watching Bridgerton or something and I'll be like oh yeah that looks good yeah mm-hmm. you know like <laughs> passion yeah. like and and but then if you think about it you're like oh but these women have no rights they have no <laughs> choices they have to get married like yeah. thank god he's a duke but what if he wasn't Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. You know what I mean. And so, it's 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 like very easy to get caught up in all those like toxic ideas of of what it should be. Yeah, according to religion, according to politics, society, whatever. Well, you know, I think I have, have one, but Nava, I'm curious yeah, what yeah. you if you have one. Well, I actually just have a response to pens. I I think that answer like for me highlights how prevalent the media is in distorting our understanding of romantic love because if you think about any other kind of love like if I love a plant I have to figure out what kind of soil this plant needs and how much exposure to sunlight and how often I need to water it and if I don't do that this plant will die if I have a child it's not going to figure itself out I have to nurture and tend to so why in a romantic relationship don't you also need to learn about your partner and the conditions that allow you to like nurture that relationship the best it doesn't just like it's not just like an explosion and a fire that keeps going forever but I think that's one of the images that we get so we don't so I think that's the kind of work that it is just like caring for a plant caring for Mm -hmm. an animal caring for your child you care for your partner you care for each other you learn about that like institution together Um, so yeah something about Penn's answer just like helped highlight for me how the media particularly around romantic love really distorts something about it yeah, th- Your answer helps me understand why my plants keep dying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, as no, long yeah. as your child's alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great success. Oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. He hasn't eaten today. Oh, I gotta go. <laughs> What's yours, Sophie? I think. I mean, I there's there's several. I think I I spoke up a little bit when you mentioned the inverse pen that like marriage takes work or a relationship takes work because I do think sometimes that's leaned on a little too heavily for me. Yeah, I feel I, like, I agree with that. Pen, the pendulum swings. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I think the one that comes up for me a lot is like you have to love yourself before you can love mm-hmm. anyone else. I just don't think that's true. I think we naturally love and I think you learn about yourself through in relationship to other people so mm-hmm. if you had yeah, they're to they're a mirror yeah yeah exactly if you had and who to who doesn't want to just look into a mirror wow. <laughs> 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 they mirror back something you might yeah. need might need to hear well yeah I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what you mean uh, we have the next question here uh, <laughs> moving on <laughs> <laughs> what was the second question? Oh, yeah. We so in one of your press tours, you were like, it's not just romantic love that can become too obsessive. It's friendships. But then they didn't ask you a follow up. And I really wanted to know the follow up. Like, what were you referring to about friendships that become too controlling or too obsessive? Yeah. Mm. Well, I think and I experienced this a little in middle school. Like nobody has an identity. And so you kind of cling to one another's identity. And, you know, you all dye your hair blonde. You all wear the same clothes. You all kind of like subscribe to the same way of being (laughs) and then suddenly um, you can become very dependent on one another. Mm. I think I had, you know, I had a friend and I think I said one time, I was like, oh, well, we might not go to the same college. And that was devastating for her. Mm. And that's when I realized I was like, oh, I'm in a, 
I'm very much in a like a deeply connected relationship, but that doesn't have room. It doesn't have space and room to be your own. Mm. It's kind of like we were always together, so we were. Mm. It's like, and I think I'm sure in the context of the show, I was referring to Peach and Beck. Oh yeah, did they again? Oh, right, yeah. There's this kind of uh, codependent element, but it all comes. I mean, for me, as you can tell, I'm very uh, just interested in being my own person and knowing my own person and 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 not having it dictated by others again mm-hmm. i think that probably stems from middle school where it was so <laughs> dictated by all these other elements in my life where now i'm like wait no i i really want to make sure this is how i like how i want to behave or what i believe in and and it's the same in all my relationships friendships mm-hmm. and all and the best friendships are the ones where you again you can just like the best loves they are like great loves in and of themselves friends where yeah. you're like oh i can be every part of myself with you but like you know the messy um you know like the to- the the toxic pieces that i'm working on mm. or i mean hopefully you're working on yeah and then all the all the goodness too. That's last That's thing really I'll say profound. before we move on is yeah. just you you highlighted something there that I like, which is it just made me think of how we sexualize love so intensely. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and the truth is, it's so much so that I don't even. It's hard to talk about the water when you're a fish in it, and mm-hmm. it's just the water we're in. I think particularly as a man, it's like love is uh, so highly sexualized as, you know, that's why boys have trouble expressing themselves to each other. Yeah, and, that's and why so they're they, awful and, in middle school. Right. That's why you had, I mean, you know, you said you extend grace to those boys. And I think, I mean, it's gracious that you say that. And just for a moment, like taking you at your word and just exploring what that means, like those boys were already told that you can't essentially be yourself and express love for another boy basically mm-hmm. which do, shouldn't be which they only do in sports you know? right I mean, yeah. if you've yeah, been watching course. the world yeah. cup i'm like gosh <laughs> you know this what? is the mo- <laughs> they're just like grabbing w- each other watching <laughs> watching that with my toddler so we watched the england france game and and it was so funny because it was like when they win i realized because we were watching parts on mute and it's the first time he's ever seen anything like that <laughs> we really don't watch television with him and this was a very big screen and and he was, and he's a very thoughtful guy. So he's just like, really, I could tell he was really watching it and kind of just like wondering. And and I, I, I don't remember what I said to him, but I was thinking to myself, like, when they're happy, they look angry. And when they lose, they cry. And mm-hmm. like this depiction of the emotional spectrum of a man, you know, like fighting to win, it's so, I mean, just in the context of me thinking about how to, how to make this like not a an unfortunately formative moment for him? I mean, you know, you can't protect him. They just they're literally living in the world. They can't. We can't make him be raised a thousand years from now. So whatever. It, it's it's he's he's gonna be who's gonna be. But I just thought to myself, like, I know this is going in somewhere really mm-hmm. deep because he's seeing men who look like you know they're they're these physical uh, f- just images of a, a kind of perfection and performance and and he's seeing them act this way which you know again like not judging them i mean the passion of sport is like is in a way a beautiful thing but that that kind of masculinity where it's like we've not been allowed to express ourselves so when we win we hump yes <laughs> And we, you know, and we take off our shirt and then we cry because we lose it. And we kiss each other. Yeah. <laughs> they kiss each other. I think it's, I'm like, thank God for sports in some ways. I feel like sports sure, yeah. is theater for the masses. Mm-hmm. It's what theater does for me, which gives me catharsis and feeling and freedom. I think sports gives that to everyone else who watch sports. Mm-hmm. Forgive me, I don't, not really. But you can see it. Like, That's interesting, it, yeah. It allows people to express themselves in this huge way. Yeah, I mean, I do think that it is It is largely men, though, that are in need, because you're saying people, need, yeah. and I think it is really, it is so specifically men, yeah, and it is so specifically men of a certain age. They're yeah, allowed to express love for one another yeah. because they have this shared To sing love. together. Yeah, to sing, I mean, to literally, men, yeah, they literally will sing and cry and hold each other. Men can't. I mean, really, that's like that's the the arena of sports is where you can do that, and it's considered yeah. totally fine. 
But then, of course, singing and crying and holding each other, those those three things are very, they're yeah. not, they're really outside of an arena. Mm. They're not. Mm. In a living room. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. Anyway. Well, hopefully that's changing. Sure. Mm. Yeah. You you work on it. I can't do it. For the, for the men, I can't do anything yeah, as of right that's now. That's right. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry to bring us back. We we've like gone on such a nice journey. <laughs> but I wonder just to bring it back a little bit to you for a second. What Elizabeth, what was your favorite scene to film with Penn? If you think back on that first season. My or you could start you with your favorite scene because I'm probably in it. Yeah, that's right. I, just because I'm in the show so much, it's How not a. It's not a. It's not a the show is called me. <laughs> I'm in every scene. If I'm not in a scene, I'm there watching. That's right. Right? Like if it's a scene, but specifically in the first season, if it's between you and a friend, chances are Joe is is watching, which is yeah. you know the whole the what reason was my the whole conceit. Favorite is. scene. Hard to recall. They're also. They're, I mean, they're all so. Tasty. Uh, <laughs> I want to say, you know, like for the week I was like in the cage, even though that seems mm. like a weird thing to enjoy. No, I get, no, what you I mean get that. It's yeah, like, it's, it, it's intense. It, it's intense, but you and you can kind of just like live in that intensity. Mm. I, I would just stay in the cage and I would just lay down, and people would right. work around me. And it because it was kind of like again, there's something about the cage that feels theater esque because yeah. it's dark around it but mm. then the lights are on on the the cage um hmm. yeah i i enjoy i mean i enjoyed every scene we did the the great thing about that show it was like i was doing like 10 different movies in one mm -hmm. because it would be like a romantic comedy at one point That's and right. then a thriller at another um I mean, it was just like every we it, we experienced every or Beck certainly did like mm -hmm. every kind of journey because she was unaware mm -hmm. of yeah. the through line yeah, right. of the stalking bit. Um, I also like the scene where um, I run into him. Beck runs into Joe with his new girlfriend. Mm, There's yeah. something so like that feeling. I don't know if anyone's ever felt that feeling where you, where you you're like, oh, my ex is married now, or mm. or you bump into mm -hmm. them and you're like, and of course Beck and Joe, they still had more, more of a story to go. I mean, not that much more. Not that. Yeah. Much. Not to be fair. <laughs> a couple episodes, <laughs> one or two, maybe. Her end was nigh. Elizabeth, but I got that. There's just something. It just t it tells you a lot about Beck because she really was like seeking, kind of like validation, yeah, from outward sources. Which yes, what do you think? Well, I, I was just curious, like how much do you feel like you've lived now with Beck it, beyond what you had to portray? Because now mm. the show has gone on, and you know, I mean, you did return in season two, two. for a, a, a brief, brief moment, and you know. Beck will always be the sort of, I don't know, the iconic, the the the, the way we learn about the Joe. The girl. Yeah, right. That's what I used to mm. call her. I was like, she's mm. the girl. I call her the one who got away. <laughs> uh, is, <laughs> that's that's very Joe of you. You've yeah, been hanging out is, in his mind for too long. Um, <laughs> I, like, how do you feel like you've lived, is there a legacy of Beck that you feel like you live with? Do you, do you feel like you have to, do you feel like you get a lot of people who, you know, come up to you and you sort of talk about it with them? You know what I mean? Like, is it, yeah. is it something that you feel like you've lived with and thought about a lot more? In a lot of ways, do you, have, do you just move on? In a lot of ways, I just move on. Mm, that would make sense. Uh, <laughs> but it's not to say that, you know, when I get recognized, that's the show. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. that's, I think and, that's why I And asked, I yeah. think, I like, out of all the characters I've played, I look the most like her on my day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. I also live in New York. Right. Okay, um, yeah, you're in the environment. Yeah, I, I kind of lived her life without the stalking thank god no. <laughs> um and without the the horrible death um <laughs> <laughs> but i yeah i think i think the, the yeah so it's really only when i get recognized where it's like oh you're mm. that girl mm. 
No. Or most of the time, it's like, you look so much like that girl from that show. Really? Mm. <laughs> yeah. And I'll be like, thank you so much. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, she's really pretty. No. <laughs> um, she is. That's what I say yeah. in my head. I don't. Yeah. I don't because Aww. I've I've discovered, I don't know how you handle it, Penn, but, but everyone probably knows that you're definitely the person. At this point, it's a very, yeah. It's pretty, de- there's like no, yeah. nobody who's kind of, I feel like it's, everyone thinks I look like a friend of theirs. Yeah, that mm. used to happen a lot. Yeah. It doesn't like, happen it's, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you're just, people are so excited when they figure out it's you that most of the time I'm just like, yeah, there's mm-hmm. me. <laughs> it's so, I don't, it's like there's no good way to handle that. No, mm. there's not really, no. You guys want to hear an embarrassing story? Yes, yeah. always. Speaking of being recognized, um, I was I was in Savannah on vacation and the the waiter comes up and he's like, gosh, you look so familiar. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? That's that's nice. Um, he's like, yeah, yeah. You you work at the bar down the street. And I was like, no, I don't. But and then I said for the first time, I don't normally do this. I was like, you might know me from TV. <laughs> there's no good way. There's like no yeah. humble way. Yeah. There's no there's no good way. Yeah. But I thought, oh, I'll just take a like. The odds are he recognizes mm-hmm. me, and he was like, yeah. oh, really? What what show? I just like named a couple of things. <laughs> like and going then, through the list. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, like, yeah, no, giving him my resume. Um, how about this one? And then he no, comes no. back and he's like, he's like, he's like, oh, I Googled you, but no, I haven't seen any of your shows. You just, <laughs> you just really look like that girl from, from the, the bar. bar. <laughs> and I, I, my husband, he was just like, that's, that's the worst that's ever gone. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, like, you, you, he was like, you cannot do that again. You can't be like, oh, you might know me from TV. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you told, I was like, it's so exciting for them yeah. when when they yeah. think that they've met. Anyways, yeah. there's no good there's no good way to handle it. So now I don't say anything. I'm just like, oh yeah, thank you. Oh, that's very or, charming. I mean, it's really hard to know. What is, it's it's really embarrassing. Yeah, it's not a normal. Yeah. That's Beck's yeah. legacy. <laughs> yeah, she's that's like, <laughs> are, are you the girl that died? I'm the girl in the box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beck, I have a final you question Beck? for Elizabeth. you. Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'd like Beck to say I did be, that on purpose, uh, but. <laughs> um, what should happen, in your opinion, give us yes. your hottest, hottest take. What should happen to Joe when the series ends? What does he deserve? Death. Mm-hmm. Who should do Death it? By a thousand cuts. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yes. I, I'm thinking like a gang of women. Mm. Oh my gosh, like um, Handmaid's Tale. And then I'm thinking that a woman should become the next Joe. Mm. <laughs> okay, so, so that's real can, empowerment. Can I, wait, wait, wait. Can I, I know before, that that's bef- not yeah. politically correct, but that satisfies some yeah. like mm. deep anger that's also not allowed to be, you know, out in the world because I'm a nice girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, so 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 this is a an actual question. This is why we ask a question like that. Um, just want to, on the record, I did not ask that question. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I it was my it. question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I, I hear you, and like you know, we're all entitled to our answers. I've had to think about this constantly because I get asked what should happen to Joe, and you know, from a from a completely like theoretical standpoint, thinking about all the possibilities. You know, I've come to a place where, you know, and I, and I got to answer questions quickly, not on this show, but. <laughs> <laughs> no proof. We try. Doing, it's hard for you. you. Know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, uh, and I, f- I feel like, because you, you just, you just, you just said something that's, that's kind of like, that's really complex, where you're wanting to give a voice to this aspect of like the feminine that has been so oppressed historically yes. and un- and and un- unable to uh, to yeah like a voice that's been that's been silenced yeah. right which then creates of course the a right well well a right a righteous feeling of anger which you know anger is not just all bad anger is a, a response to a certain kind of stimulus and it's like I, anger can be a momentary tool or it can become a chronic it's informative hopefully sure yeah. yeah at its best it's a, it's informative and then you move through it and hopefully there's a there's a, an environment where you can process it and heal so but obviously mm-hmm. like it's not like women or just all of humanity has been able to do that right so yet so in a way you were just speaking to to like this really complex thing at once that that it would f- it fe- it's what you want like the feeling 
of what you want, but then yeah. knowing that that's technically, in a way, that's that's not Beck like experiencing retribution. It's almost like whoever's doing that being brought down to his level. You know? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I agree with you. Um, but I think you're dead on. I have some kind of like in my mind, like the the perfect movie is like a, a, a group of women battling men mm-hmm. and win and winning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like the beginning of time starting over and let's see what happens when a woman's in charge. And it's not to say that I think that's the best thing for humanity. Mm-hmm. I right. certainly do not think it's the best thing for humanity. Um, mm. But it's what you want. It's what. I mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, I text. So yeah. that's, yeah. that's where I'm at in yeah. my. Um, in your in glass my, box. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I texted Penn but, uh, what I think. Oh, sorry, I cut oh, you off, Elizabeth. Yes. What do you think? No, I told Penn. I was like, you should take this to writers room. I think Paco should come back in the final season, have a like an episode mm. arc, and then I think Paco should kill him. Oh wow! I think that's how the series Aww. should resolve. Sweet you know, I, d- I don't want to burst your bubble, but I, I, I even suggested that to the writers years ago. Oh, really? I didn't. Yeah, know Yeah, well, you know, yeah. because well, because when I didn't know Paco was coming back, I was like, Paco's got to kill Joe. Wait, mm. when you didn't, didn't know, know Paco was reason. coming back? Oh, sorry, no, I mean, I said that the wrong way. That's actually not a spoiler. When <laughs> I, I like, thought Paco what? was coming back, <laughs> back in seasons one and two, when I mm. thought Paco might come back, oh, I, yeah. I was yeah. just like, oh, you, Paco totally should, yeah. should kill right. Joe. You know, right. yeah. yeah, he's got to make up for killing but back he, essentially. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. But does Paco know that he's? Res- it, it would have to be like this whole journey of how he knows he's That's responsible right. for the death of someone. <laughs> yeah, in it's order to show. feel yeah, like right, a murderous right, right. need. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, it might be. Yeah. Interesting. Might be interesting. Uh, but I, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not real. <laughs> It's not yeah. exactly. It's not real. So it's that's why real. maybe the women should kill. Yeah, yeah. Sure. because in the world that's not going to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the world, the women are being killed, and I think that's going to continue on. Men are going to continue, uh, like ho- hopefully, you, slowly but surely changing. Mm. Yeah. But I think ultimately, that's still the way yeah. in many places, and and still such an issue that I think we could stand to have a little severity on the others, on the <laughs> in in our entertainment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think yeah. that's that's the. But I could be dead wrong though. So yeah. ask me in another ten years. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you've grown. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Clearly uh, not over it. You want to ask yeah. the final question, Pen? Um. Yeah, so hard left <laughs> back to middle school. <laughs> Although maybe you can like thread through all this all stuff that we tie. Yeah, no it does. I mean it it definitely all ties into yeah. it because I would even say in when you break down like the way you feel about Beck, I mean you know, you you are linking it to mm-hmm. these initial feelings you had in middle school Absolutely. and then which of course then predate middle school so but you know let's go back to you at 12 if you had a time machine you could step into it and talk to yourself what would you say what would what would you say to 12 year old elizabeth lale um i i it's really simple i think i would just say like you are all good like every part of you is good and worthy um and and again it sounds like really simple but i think i have such like such there's you know i because of my upbringing because of this kind of like good bad like this is evil this is wrong this is right and if you don't behave in a right way then suddenly my default is like oh you're a bad person or this is bad or this piece of you is bad mm. Um, and I think that's really not serving me and hasn't served me throughout life. And I think that's what, that's what I'd say. I'd be like, you're allowed, you're allowed to have a favorite color. You're allowed (laughs) to disagree. You're allowed to be loud. Mm. Um, like you're allowed to step outside of the rules. Mm. And I think just kind of that permission, even if you eventually come back, Mm -hmm. I think every kind of human needs to like feel like they can search in that way 
hopefully in, in a way that isn't detrimental. Right. Um, but I think for me, I was so severe the opposite way. It's like I had to be like the most righteous version of the of the human experience that there was a lot of like self-flagellation going on. Mm. I think that's what I would say. Can you give us a little insight? What is the right favorite color? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it just means, and when I when I say when I say that, and it goes to show, like it's blue. The, the mindset I was in, and especially at that time, it's like I I didn't trust that my opinion was worthwhile. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I needed to be a quiet, good girl, mm. in in every area. And so it's a really simplified version mm -hmm. way of saying it, but it's, it's no, it's totally valid. Yeah. I'm of course making a joke. I, get, I mean, I really get that. I really but get it's that. green, actually. <laughs> it's green. Yeah. Yeah, that's, okay, listen, we're gonna have to have an episode two. It's definitely not green. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're talking the about the white one. It's not ours or yours. Green. <laughs> Eyes is it? Blue. Or is it blue? Is the mo oceans cover the green? Is no, I think it's blue. Anyway, yeah, well, this, green this, represents this is, this is life. I think. I, I mean, they're both. You know, you're on the right track. Sky, both of ocean. You. <laughs> what, have you already answered this question, Pen? The right color? No. The, what would you tell your 12 year old? He has. Yeah, uh, yeah I think I've done it. Yeah, I've um, done it many times. Yeah. Uh, well, no, and um, for me, it's like it's. Uh, it. I would. It's a version of what you just said. I. I literally would just hug him and hold him so that yeah. he knew that he was loved uh, but maybe it's changing yeah i don't i i i feel like it's at this point i don't feel like i would say anything yeah. i would want to show something like demonstrate yeah. something more through action mm. I, I don't know nothing you is. could say yeah like who, you have what, to learn these lessons mm. the hard way yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. it's true I, yeah it's 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 i would want to be a mentor over time that's what i would rather do it's like to be there for him all the time i mm. couldn't just say anything at once yeah mm -hmm. i i can't think of a single thing that would land really truly i mean of course all the things work but mm. That's what I would just want to be there. I'm going to be my own guardian angel. Yeah. Well, in a way, you you can do that now. Yeah, that's what therapy is. Yeah, you're like constantly <laughs> having a conversation with your 12-year-old self yeah. or your 8-year-old self, whatever self it is, saying yeah. like, oh, actually, no, I've got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or we're going to get through this together. Mm -hmm. And that, dear listener, is what we're going to do together in season two. You stick around. <laughs> And we'll be right back. XOXO. Whoa! What? You heard it? Nava literally just was like... <laughs> she I just actually went to heaven. raised her arms. Nava looks like she was just winning in uh, this, this, the, the quarterfinals. Hey, you know that I was she in freaked. Gossip Girl. Did you know that? I saw no. that. Yeah, yeah that's I saw right. That. I keep forgetting and then weird? remembering. That yeah. is Don't like you play some a teacher? Parallel no, I'm, universe. I'm Are you Gossip sleeping Girl? with a father. With a father. Oh, classic. Oh. Classic. <laughs> oh, right. Are you a mother? No. 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 <laughs> I mean, look, you're young. Like, I am getting there. Don't worry. I'm not no. saying that you're anywhere near actually that age, but it's like, you no, know, I what certainly are they am. I certainly am. Um, no, I'm not a mother. No, I'm. Uh, it's like I'm like a young hot thing sleeping with the father. So you're not a part of the school world? No. And they but you know what's funny? When I auditioned for it. I thought I was auditioning for like a 16 year old. <laughs> and I was so pleased with myself. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I can I'm still, still do this. For I got this. <laughs> she like, me, hi, saw. When I got the offer, and I think they gave me, you know, like faux sides. Yeah, that's what so they So it, yeah. it felt like I was like, oh, this is a 16 year old. So I auditioned as a 16 year old. Wow. <laughs> but you got And they were like, we love that. Yeah. We were like, we yes, love the one who but, read like a 16 year old. Yeah. Cast her against a 45 year old yeah. right now. <laughs> but do she, it. But she's 28. So she, it's like a rest yeah. development. Uh -huh. um, the best that was, kind. That was a humbling moment, to say the least. <laughs> it's like, oh, I am A.G. Right back yeah. in that restaurant uh, with that waiter. <laughs> yes. <That's amazing. laughs> Don't ever assume yeah. it's the lesson. Why? I'm not. Why? <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you so much. So yeah. nice to yeah, meet you. Thank you for coming by. Yeah, you're I so think, lovely. I think middle school is such like an important topic of conversation, so I really mm -hmm. love that you guys are opening that up because yeah. bravely I really do think everything ties back to it yeah it's such a shitty hard time in life yeah and it shouldn't be yeah, yeah.